on day one. Look at the war in Ukraine, and I think it's something we have to have a quick discussion about because the president of Ukraine is in our country, and he's making little nasty aspersions toward your favorite president and me. But take a look at the war happening right now in Ukraine. It would have never happened if I were president to start off with. And there didn't even have to be a settlement. It wouldn't have happened, period. Russia wouldn't have gone in. I spoke to Putin about it a lot. I got along very well with Putin. I spoke to him a lot. You know, I was the one that ended the pipeline, Nord Stream 2, in Europe, going to Germany. And uh, he said, that was a bad thing. That was the biggest job. But then they say how nice I was to Russia. No, I wasn't nice. But we got along. We had a good relationship, which is a good thing, not a bad thing. But what's happening in Ukraine is a very serious matter. Let's say we did settle, and a deal would have been made with Russia years ago, three years ago, before it all began. And we could have made a deal easily. Could have made it easily. If we had a president who was intelligent, we could have made a deal easily. But what do you have left now, right? Three years of horrible fighting. The country is absolutely obliterated. Millions and millions of people, including all of these great soldiers, they're dead. Those gorgeous buildings with golden towers are demolished and laying broken on their side. And you'll never see that kind of a town or city again can never be duplicated. They're all demolished other than Kiev. You'll never be able to rebuild the cities or towns the way they are impossible to do. They were thousands of years old. And just think about it. Just three years ago, you had a beautiful civilization, millions of people that were living that are now not with us any longer, magnificent towns and cities that were so beautiful could never be reconstructed, other than Kiev, which is actually starting to be hit right now. He wanted to save that. Most of the country is gone. The heritage is gone. So many people are dead. Many people have left for Poland, for Hungary, and for other places, never to return. And that includes Many, many Russian soldiers are dead. A deal could have been made. There wouldn't have been one person that died, and there wouldn't have been one golden tower laying shattered on its side. A deal could have been made if we had a competent president instead of a president that egged it all on. And Biden and Kamala allowed this to happen by feeding Zelensky money and munitions like no country has ever seen before. Every time he came to our country, he'd walk away with $60 billion. He's probably the greatest salesman on Earth. But now, Ukraine is running out of soldiers. They're using young children and old men because their soldiers are dying and other things are happening to them that we won't even discuss. So many are badly injured. Now, what do you have? What deal can we make? What deal can we make? The, the, it's, well, it's demolished. The people are dead. The country is in rubble. And who are these people that allowed this to happen? Who are these people? I said, don't let it happen. This never happened in my four years. I told President Putin, you're not going to do it. He would never have done it. They started to form after I left. And I actually thought they were forming as a negotiating tactic for Putin. I thought it was a negotiation. But through a lot of bad statements and stupid statements, he went in. And he's no angel. It's all such a horror. Biden and Harris caused this situation, by the stupidity of what they said, by every move they make. But they caused the situation, and now they're locked in. They're locked in.
I watched this poor guy yesterday at the United Nations. He didn't know what he was saying. They just don't know what to do. They're locked into a situation. It's sad. They just don't know what to do. Because Ukraine is gone. It's not Ukraine anymore. You can never replace those cities and towns, and you can never replace the dead people, so many dead people. Any deal, even the worst deal, would have been better than what we have right now. If they made a bad deal, it would have been much better. They would have given up a little bit, and everybody would be living, and every building would be built, and every tower would be aging for another 2,000 years. And we'll only get worse with these people. With Ka Kamala doesn't even, she doesn't know what she's doing. More people will die. More cities will fall. The ones that fell will continue to receive more and more bombs. They'll be broken up asunder, worse than they are right now. Nothing is standing. The crops are dying. There's really nothing for the Ukrainian people to move back to. And it didn't need to happen. Those buildings are down. Those cities are gone. They're gone. And we continue to give billions of dollars to a man who refuses to make a deal, Zelensky. There was no deal that he could have made that wouldn't have been better than the situation you have right now. You have a country that has been obliterated. Not possible to be rebuilt. It'll take hundreds of years to rebuild it. There's not enough money to rebuild it if the whole world got together. They're not going to be satisfied until they send American kids over to Ukraine, and that's what they're trying to do. And the moms and dads of America don't want their kids fighting Ukraine and Russia. And we're not going to have our soldiers die across the ocean. I will restore, as I did for four years, the only president in 81 years, they say. No wars. Hillary Clinton said, look at him, look at him. He'll immediately start wars, no. Then she said, look at his rhetoric. He's going to start wars. I said, no, my rhetoric is going to keep us out of wars. And that's what happened. I kept you out of wars. My rhetoric kept you out of wars. I stopped wars from happening. If it were somebody else, they would have gotten five Nobel Prizes. I never even got a mention, and I wouldn't, because I happen to be a different kind of a person. And the fake news treats me much differently than they treat other people. Obama got a Nobel Peace Prize, and he didn't even do it. He said, why did I get it? He had no idea. It was immediate as soon as he walked into office, practically. He didn't do anything. What I've done is incredible. The Abraham Accords alone, incredible. But they haven't done anything with it. We would have had every country just about in the Middle East signed into the Abraham Accords, but the Abraham Accords brought peace. We would have had total peace in the Middle East. But I don't care about that with the Nobel Prize. I had so many people, you should get the Nobel Prize. I said, don't worry about it. They don't get the Nobel Prize to certain people. But these are the people that get things done. These are the people that understand strength and they understand peace because we will restore peace through strength. We will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. We will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. This is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, and misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe and unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. We're going to do things for our people that haven't been done for a very long time. And we started four years ago. We were doing things that nobody ever believed, jobs. And we had the greatest economy in the history of our country. Four years ago, seven years ago,
six years ago and five years ago. Together, we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, low inflation, so that everyone can afford groceries, a car, and a home, the American dream. We will stop the invasion and end migrant crime, support our great police, strengthen our military, build a missile defense shield over our country, keep critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools, and we will keep men out of women's sports. We will defend the Second Amendment, restore free speech, and we will secure once and for all our elections. Our elections are under siege. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and with hope. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris, and we must stop her country-destroying liberal agenda once and for all. It has to end. We have to bring our country and take our country back. So get everyone you know and vote. We want a landslide that's too big to rig. Very simple. Too big to rig. On November 5th, we will save our economy, we will save our country. It will go down as the most important day in the history of our country. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will put America first all the time, and we will take our country back. North Carolina, get out to vote. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.